Hey guys, so earlier this year I told you guys I was going to start doing other things on my channel. Not only am I going to be continuing to do TTC stuff, but I was going to start sharing more of myself with you guys. So that may be vlogs, it may be story times, it may be renovation stuff, whatever. And today is the first video of that series. And I'm going to share with you guys my battle with depression. Depression, unfortunately, started very early for me. Um, when I say early, I mean like single digit age, like early elementary school. And I never knew what it was. It, I just felt, um, I felt alone. I felt sad all the time. I felt angry all the time. I I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel wanted growing up. So I never knew what it was. The best way to describe depression for me was kind of like a feeling of homesick. You know how when you go away from college, you're away from your entire family, all your friends, everything you know, you just completely starting over and you are sad, you are miserable, you're unhappy. Um, sometimes you get physically ill. That's how I felt. The only difference was I was homesick while I was home. I can remember being outside with my friends playing tag or hide and seek or hopscotch or, um, double dutch and we will be having the time of our lives me and my friends they will be laughing and ha 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 joking and everything and i felt nothing it was like the entire game and it was like that every single day at a very young age i unfortunately had a lot of weight on my shoulders um I had a lot of guilt. I felt like everything that went wrong in my family, in my immediate family, was my fault. And that stemmed from how I got here. When my parents met, my father was married. He was married with three children. His wife had her own demons that she was battling. And for whatever reason, he took that as an excuse to cheat on her. It was a punk ass excuse to cheat. And he then met my mom. They started dating behind his wife back. My mother got pregnant with me since she was pregnant with me and his kids with his first wife was older. He decided to leave his wife they ultimately got a divorce and my parents decided that they were going to live happily ever after together they were going to live spend the rest of their lives together and that sounded good in theory but in reality a lot of resentment from all parties came with that and I was blamed for it. So anytime it was an argument, Regina came up. Anytime that my father beat my mom, from the times that I overheard or I physically saw, I was brought up, you know. So anytime anything went wrong, I blamed me. When my mom finally got tired of my wasted space dad beating her and told her, they needed to separate and he left I blamed me and that's what most kids do they blame themselves the only difference between my situation and theirs is I never felt liked by my family I never felt liked by my mom Never knew if she loved me. Um, I think she loved me. But even at 38, I don't know. My dad 
he tolerated his responsibilities when he felt like it in regards to me. But as far as him loving me, no. And that's hurtful for any child. And all of that weight was on my shoulders and I carried it. And so it's very hard to be a happy child when you're dragging so much. And each year it became worse and worse. And the older I got, the more I became, um, the more I looked like my dad. And now that created more issues because I now I look like the guy who hate me so much. So maybe the reason he doesn't hate me, he doesn't like me is because I look like him. It was a lot. And over the years, each year the depression became worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And worse. And it ultimately led me to self-harm myself, not once, not twice, but three times. The very first time I took pills, and I remember being so angry when I woke up because I was just like, like, life doesn't want me here. I don't want to be here, so why wasn't I allowed to go? So I was angry. And I can remember the social worker telling my mom she made an appointment for me to go talk to this person and an appointment to get this. They was trying to get me help because they felt like for someone so young to be trying to do this, it was problems. My mama swept it under the rug because... That just meant she had to take time out of her life to do something for me, the child that she resented. And it was swept under the rug. The second time I tried to self-harm myself, I used a knife. I don't know if you can see it. It used to be longer from here all the way to there. Um, the last time I stabbed myself in the wrist with a screwdriver. And at that point, I just gave up. I was just like, okay, I can't even do this right. So that made me more depressed. And, um, man, it was like living every day as a disappointment. That's what depression feels like. And I know a lot of my depression comes from my parents but I don't put all the blame on them because a lot of times with parents, it's no handbook to be a parent. It's no handbook. You can read certain things, but every kid is different. So what that author did for their child, it may not work for yours. So it's no handbook. And I don't know if I'm just making an excuse for their behavior or what, but I feel like a lot of times, some of the mistakes that our parents made was because of generational issues. They learned how to be a parent based off how their parent parent. So how they was treated sometimes is how you'll be treated. And I think that's the case for me. I don't know. But I know that that was just like this much. And that was enough for a whole bunch of other stuff in life to depress me and it got worse and worse over the years but I was afraid to try to self-harm again because I was scared of what my mom was going to do if I didn't succeed and the flip side was I didn't think I was even good enough to do that like I wasn't even successful at that like so why even try Maybe a couple of years, maybe two years later, I became pregnant, and that was the best thing that happened to me. I never wanted kids. I took all the measures not to have any kids. I was on depo, and somehow I still became pregnant. I'm not telling anybody to go get pregnant. That's going to solve your depression, honey. Do not comment that crap down below. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just ha saying that that happening is what helped me get help for myself. I had my daughter and I just felt like I had to give her a life 
that I wasn't given and I was going to love on her uh, that will make my inner self envious. And that's what I did. And although I was still depressed sometimes, just looking at my child, I would say, you know what? That's, that crap isn't worth it. It's not worth it. And, and I was okay for a few years. Then when my daughter was four, my, I lost my baby and I lost my person in the most horrific matter. And, um, excuse me. Not only did I lose them, I lost everything I owned. And that sent me to a place of wanting to rid myself again. And that's a feeling I didn't feel since I was a teen. When it comes to my child's dad, I'm blessed and fortunate for him. We don't get along. We probably would never get along, but I'm blessed because back then I always had him to depend on when it came to our daughter. So he would get our daughter twice a week while I was in class and every other weekend so I could have some me time. And one day I was sitting at home, I was naked, so um, I don't know why I had keys in my hand, but I was just thinking, you know what, I'm gonna do it. My daughter's not home, I'm gonna do it. And I'm just gonna be done with it this time. This is gonna be it. It's gonna work this time. And for whatever reason, I had my keys in my hand and I had pictures on my key ring. I don't know if you guys remember, I don't think anybody does this now, but people used to have like the clear picture frames on their key ring and it was pictures of me and my daughter and I just looked at her face and I said, if I was to leave her, I would be making her feel the way I was made to feel my entire life and I cannot do that to her like she deserves me at my 100% best and I'm not at my best at this moment so I got the phone book and I went to psychiatrist I closed my eyes I pointed and the person that it landed on I called and I made an appointment for that next Saturday since I wasn't gonna have my daughter and therapy helped me a lot it showed me that circumstances that I did, didn't have any control of over wasn't my fault therapy helped me realize that I am worth so much more therapy helped me so much and a lot of times people have this assumption about therapy that it's just about sitting on this couch and just talking and people just feel like, oh, I could talk to my home girl. And it's so different. And I don't know if it's because they are trained in this profession, but the way they talk to you, the way they interpret the things that you say, the, want, the way they listen to you completely is worth however much it cost going to therapy was the best decision i made not only did i go through therapy for a few years my therapist had me on i want to say zoloff i think that was the name of it i will say with any medication especially medication that controls your mood and your mood swings and things like that it's very important that you pay attention to how your body is reacting to it because i know noticed when i had the first dosage it made me delirious it made my su suicidal thoughts come back and not only did it came back it came back like 20 times worse it was like kill girl kill it was it was bad i was in a bad place but once we got it 
down to a manageable, I think the lowest of the lowest dosage, I was okay. And I stayed on it for a few years and I took myself off them and I have been good. I wanted to share this because people don't talk about depression. It is viewed as a weakness, especially in the African American community. Nobody talks about it. You're not supposed to go through this. You're not supposed to be weak. It's almost as if, especially your elders in our community will make you feel like you going through something that is making you so weak like that is a spit in the face of all of our ancestors who fought in wars and fought in slavery and, and did all the things to afford us this freedom we have now. It's, they view it as, a, you know, spit in the face. So it's almost as if we are trained not to discuss the things in our life that make us quote unquote weak. For me, I don't believe discussing it makes you weak. I feel like doing nothing about it is what makes you weak. If you are somebody that's going through depression, do not be afraid to talk to somebody. It is websites you can go to. It's Instagram pages that you can go to. The world of social media. Man, if we had that back when I was going through it, I probably wouldn't have had to pay that lady all that money. <laughs> um, it's phone numbers you can call. Talk to somebody. Do not hold it in. It is okay. You know, you're not alone. You're not by yourself. You're not the only person on the planet that's fighting yourself. And if you've gone through it and you made it through it and you're still here, stand up and give yourself a standing ovation because you did what you didn't think you would be able to do. And that's live. So, until next time, bye guys.